Welcome back to the Whiskey and Wisdom Podcast. As per usual, it's your co-host, Chris Kellum. And I am Tyler, y'all. And our special mm-hmm. guest today is... Brande Starbuck. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you. Before, Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Before we jump too far into it, we were in here a little bit before. It was me and Brande, and Chris wasn't here. So I had the luxury of choosing which whiskey we were doing. And now Chris gets to guess what it is. <coughs> um, it won't be too hard, but it'll be fun to do regardless. Okay. So, all right, let's check it out. Cheers. Cheers. We'll see. Well, on the nose, there's a little. uh, (laughs) Despite what I say all the time, I really don't know what that means. I'm just like smelling it. I'm going to wait until I hear what Chris has to say. (laughs) (laughs) It's not that bad. You just weren't expecting it. If I told you what it was, you would have been prepared for it. Mm. <laughs> I did not. I did not mix alcohols either. His that was the next thing you were wondering. That's it all. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> it's vanilla crown. Okay. Yeah, it's, that sounds right. It's not my favorite crown. No. No. So I make a. If you see the. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can see the face I make. <laughs> it quite literally. Like it's. A, it's not bad. It just reminds me of like cough syrup. Okay. Not in a, like because of how thick it mm-hmm. lays it on your thicker, yeah. on your tongue. It's really sweet. Mm-hmm. Yes. Really sweet. So we've talked about this before. So when wow. big brands do like flavored alcohol, they throw in a lot of artificial flavor and artificial sweetener, mm-hmm. which makes it super super sweet versus if you do it at home and just like soak your alcohol like drop fruit in your alcohol and add more flavor to it, mm. which I think is a lot healthier. Um, and you get more of a true And the flavor. grand scheme of alcohol, yes. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. It's, me and my best it's, friend had this conversation about vodka today. She said, well, I bought a whole handle of Tito's, and I'm going to just do Tito's and LaCroix. So I think that that's lighter and healthier. And I looked at her and I go, isn't that like potatoes and carbs and yes. all? And she's like, right. she's like, well, yeah, but it's better than rum. And I was like, oh, my God. I guess if we're going down (laughs) down (laughs) that ridge. It's like, let's just tell ourselves what we need to to know. My tequila is only infused with blueberries, so there's technically some antioxidants in there. Exactly. On that note, I was at the Starling because we're recording this early. So I had this on Cinco de Mayo, and they had fruit fruit infused tequila. Was it good? So delicious. I'm surprised we didn't do, like, I know y'all are whiskey and wisdom, but I'm surprised we didn't do like an, what is it called? An, an, an Anejo? An, oh, an Anejo? Yeah. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Which tequila. to me is like the best sipping tequila I've ever had. The problem is finding, well, it's not actually a problem. <laughs> um, we just have a lot of whiskey. Yes, I yeah. see that. Um, the collection <laughs> is beautiful. So, what And the podcast is whiskey and wisdom. Yes, right. yeah. Oh, no. So we've had tequila and vodka and in a spirits on here because mm-hmm. um, Papa Reggie shout out yep. uh, to coach Reggie. We had him on and we did like a back to back episode of drinking tequila. Mm. So when we drink tequila, we tend to talk a lot more. <laughs> and so we end up gotcha. having two episodes. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> and so we're, we're trying to chill out. So the next year or so we're going to try and drink down our liquor. Yeah. Is that a collection of both of yours combined? That's a v- probably a, a half no about a quarter yeah of what we have because i have a bunch down there there's more over there yeah. chris has some at his house i have at my house yeah yeah i have at least cool. 18 to 20 bottles at my house oh my goodness and which is a small collection in whiskey world but for two guys who only drink like six ounces at a time <laughs> right yeah they're That's a lot they, yes. they're full bottles <laughs> yes <laughs> but enough about the whiskey tell us a little bit about yourself so I am Brande. I am a single, newly divorced as of a year ago, a mom of two. I have a daughter, Mackenzie, who's 10, and a son, Marshall, who's eight. And we live in Porter's Neck, part of Wilmington. That's where we settled. Originally, I'm from Tampa, Florida, and am Italian by heritage. Okay. So we settled here in August of last year, Mm -hmm. and we have moved quite a bit around the southeast. Mm -hmm. So originally from Tampa, Florida, but we've lived in Raleigh, Charlotte, Dallas, Fort Worth, Louisville, Lexington, um, all over. And then 
most recently Jackson, Mississippi. Okay. And then we came here. My ex-husband accepted a role with GE, and we mm-hmm. share custody of our two kids. So I was told, well, I'm going. <laughs> so I followed. <laughs> and... Um, and it's been a really interesting experience. It really has been. Wilmington has its own charm, and it's a lot smaller than I realized before we moved here. Yeah. Yes. So. And it's funny, too, because a lot of people that move here are usually from, like, outskirts of Raleigh or Charlotte, and mm-hmm. they're like, well, I don't want to move to whatever city I'm closest to. I'm going to move to Wilmington. And they're mm-hmm. like, it's such a big city. And I'm like, <laughs> not really. Yeah. <laughs> I will quote many people from the podcast. Wilmington is the... Biggest little town yeah. you can yes. live in. I could definitely see that. When I, so my background as far as work goes is in multifamily property management. Mm, so okay. I, I, I didn't go to college. I went straight from high school to work. And I started leasing apartments in Fort Worth, Texas. Nice. And I grew up in that industry and I loved it. And I was in it for about 20 years on and off. And then when I moved here, I... Uh, I joined the vendor side of things. Mm. So I actually sell flooring to multifamily communities. But on the side, I've always been a blogger. I write constantly. I'm in the process of writing a book. And I'm super excited. I hope to get that published later on this year. And um, it tells the story of (laughs) Bumble Boys. Ooh. Which is why <laughs> I reached out to you. Because I wanted to share my story of online dating in Wilmington and how eventful that has been so <laughs> and that was i was telling chris and you before we got onto the actual podcast too that was one of the reasons why i wanted to get you on as much too because we've had multiple podcasts where we've had single individuals that have been on that talk about how difficult the wilmington dating pool is so i was like oh we finally have a someone who's writing the book on it <laughs> so <laughs> and um my blog a brand new day is A collection of life, uh, it's a lifestyle blog. So Mm -hmm. it's about fashion, it's about recipes, it's about um, life, it's about my divorce, it's Mm -hmm. children, parenting. Mm -hmm. And, um, but lately it's, it was a lot about dating and my, on the, uh, I mean, dating after 40, Mm -hmm. dating after divorce, as a single mom, I had all of the boxes. And so dating in Wilmington was especially (laughs) challenging. And so that's why I'm excited to be here and share a little bit about my story. Yeah, I I have to do a shout out because I I always pick with my, like my wife, because we met on Bumble, which is really funny. But we met as the transition happened. Like I know with dating apps, there's always that transition. And the question is, can you get on the app before it transitions to like all the fuck boys? <laughs> and let's be, I'm like, yes. am I wrong? No, you're exactly right. Mm. <laughs> and that's why I laugh because I'm like, I, th- I think we met perfectly because if I hadn't like hadn't met her, I would have just deleted it and tried to move somewhere else. And I'm just like, <sighs> did you, were you on all of the apps? I have been on all of them. Until when did I meet here? Like 2017, 2018. Okay. So like anything that's new has come out, I don't know about it. Okay. I know Hinge because of the commercials, yes. but like I tried Plenty of Fish. Okay. Tinder. What about Match or eHarmony? Those were the OG. They are. Mm-hmm. I was also too young and broke to afford those. <laughs> that's right. They made you pay <laughs> up, say, which yeah, may have, are. that might have a significant like characteristic of yes. your dating pool. Yep. Right. So like the pool is a little bit smaller, but those people tend to have something else going for them Mm -hmm. versus the free apps. And you're like, oh, well. Yeah. Got to put that paywall up there. Yes. Well, also, so, and we'll probably dive into this a little bit more, but being where Wilmington is located and being a coastal Carolina town, Mm -hmm. we have a lot of people who are in for business or Mm -hmm. travel for bachelor parties or, you know, just a, a weekend away. And we also are very close to Jacksonville, which we have some military action up there. And so um, it's and then we just get hit from a lot of different avenues that can host challenges in the dating world for someone that is on a dating app that might be looking for a long term investment partner. Mm -hmm. When you're on when you're in a market that is very transient Mm -hmm. that can pose a little bit of a problem oh it totally does 
I, I love Wilmington because there is a lot of motion and you can see new people mm-hmm. and it's always growing. But the people who tend to like hop on like the dating app real quickly is always like, oh, hey, you know, I'm just passing through. And I'm like, I can't say nothing because <laughs> I did it when I was traveling. Like I was in me and my friend went and did a like a friend trip. And I was like, all right, let's see who's on these apps. Yes. I'm like, am I really going to meet up with somebody? Eh, probably not. Well, <laughs> so. if you do. And I think that that's the biggest thing now is we are. We have, I was telling Tyler, we have these groups on Facebook Mm -hmm. that has, I think, changed the dynamic of online dating, which is, are we dating the same guy groups? Yes. And I'll be honest, no guy has a chance after, after those groups started. What's crazy is thinking in this Mm -hmm. type of town that you can get away with it. It's like mind blowing to me. That is it. And, and they do. I really do. And I've got a good story to share with you about yeah. one of my Bumble Boys that I hope listens. <laughs> I, just I really do say, hope listens. These, I understand having audacity, mm-hmm. but the amount of audacity these people have to date more than two people at a time, I'm like, really? And it's not, a, it's fine if you... You're open be, about it. If you're right, open yeah. with it. Because let's be honest, until you're... Until you have that DTR conversation, right. yeah. you're free. You're a free agent. You can date whoever, however, whatever. It doesn't mm. matter. But it's, it's interesting. Married men are on these apps and carrying on multiple relationships. Jeez. And then also, you know, people who have committed relationships who they may have children with mm. are on these apps. And literally because we are also so close to the markets of Jacksonville and Myrtle Beach. Mm -hmm. And Fayetteville. Raleigh. Uh, You know, I mean, we're really, we we are a stone's throw away from these places. And so it makes it very easy for not so nice people, men and women. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I speak as a woman, but I'm very well aware that women do it too. We don't talk about it as much, but (laughs) oh, we do it. (laughs) And so, um, so it, it just, it, it does, it just poses a a challenge and, and it goes back to the dating pool in Wilmington. The Mm -hmm. single people of Wilmington really have nothing to go for. I mean, we have nothing to to date. So you're talking about crazy stories. Mm -hmm. You've already mentioned one, Tom. I want you to tell us about it. (laughs) I'm, we're, me and Tyler are both on the spectrum when it comes to ADD. I like to go backwards and forwards and back okay, again. Sure. So I, I can to, follow along. I want to hear this Bumble yeah. Boy story. Oh, so, you know, newly newly divorced mm-hmm. and not smart. I don't. I mean, I just was naive, okay. and I honestly approached dating very lighthearted. So I went on with no expectations, mm-hmm. and I had a very I have a very specific physical type. I like Italians. I like shorter, darker men. Yes. And so, like, I like, and I don't, I mean, sorry for all the white boys, but, like, I just, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was married to one for, and I, who's a great dad, and I, you know, we were married for um, 10 years, and great guy, but, like, now that I was single and ready to mingle, I knew exactly what I wanted, so this gentleman who was on Hinge, it was the first person that I ever matched with on Hinge, We met and we had messaged back and forth Mm -hmm. because on Bumble, the woman initiates the conversation, but on Hinge, either one of you can. So he was great and we had a great conversation for like a day. And then I was out on Wrightsville Beach at Tower 7. Yeah, Yeah. Tower 7. And my girlfriend and I, we were day drinking and, you know, I got liquid courage. So I was like, hey, we're here. We're having tacos. Come meet us. And he's like, okay. So he comes in, as soon as I saw this guy, I was like, oh, melted. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, crap. I remember looking at Amy, and I'm like, oh, God, like, this is it. Like, this is the guy. So after lunch, like, he kissed me. I, I was I was all in. Mm-hmm. I was, And I should have, should have been a red flag. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. you know, like, I was, like, going with it. It's your first doubt. Right, so yeah. So I was now. like, oh, like, we're feeling it. I'm going to go with it. So later on that night, we went to Sea Witch on Carolina yeah. Beach. And this guy is sober. Like, he's a sober guy. So he's having water. So mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'll just drink club soda because yeah. I'm supportive, yeah. you right. know. 
and we're having a nice time, but Sea Witch is kind of not our scene. We're trying to have a like a conversation. Mm-hmm. So we go back to my place, and we end up hooking up. But I had I was like, you know, okay, it's been yeah. like two right. days. Yeah, yeah. I allowed myself the freedom to have fun. I'm like falling head over heels for this guy. It's been one day, mm-hmm. so obviously I'm the cougar, I guess, that like just like <laughs> runs after this man. And so we do this consecutively for three days. And so I talked to him one morning, it's a Monday morning and I was getting ready for work and he was, he had just left the gym and he was saying, he goes, babe, I'm running into Harris Teeter and I'll call you right back. And it's 1030. We're supposed to meet for coffee at two. Mm-hmm. Never no. heard from him again. Not once, not anything. Never. Serious? Like, Jeez. that's it. Done. Until oh, no. several months later, <laughs> he comes out of the woodwork. Literally, there is no communication. Yeah. Falls off the planet. I start doing the girl thing of, like, call my best friend. I'm like, we need to deep dive into this guy. Like, who is he? Yeah. Where right. is he from? Who, you know, all the things. So we go PI mode and we don't really come up with much. Mm-hmm. So several months pass. He reaches out to me, texts me. I know exactly who he is. I deleted him. Yeah. Because yeah. she told me, she's like, delete the asshole. Right. Yeah. So I did. And, but I knew it the second that he reached out to me who he was. And he's like, I really, I want to meet up for coffee and explain what happened. Because I was like, man, I thought you were dead or went to jail or yeah, like, right, what yeah. happened. So, and I had heard about this whole ghosting thing, but I had never experienced it. Mm-hmm. And it is a real thing. And not just in Wilmington, everywhere. Like everywhere, for sure. So I'm like, I'm giving him a chance. I'm like, you know, and I had actually been seeing someone at the time. So I was like, I have my kids meet up for coffee daytime. I'll take them. So he knows it's not a date. It's yeah. just right. a friend conversation. I go to that coffee shop. He never fucking shows. Are you kidding? What? What was the point of that? Exactly. And I just, I'm not saying it's online dating. I'm not saying it's Wilmington because he's actually from New York. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm sure he has a whole host of issues. But to reach out, I mean, to do that once. But then I felt like the idiot because I was like, why did I even give this guy a second, second opportunity to explain? Right. Because because there is something in people that want that validation that it wasn't us. Mm-hmm. Like I wanted to make sure, I wanted to know that it wasn't me that he was dissing. It was like something else. Like an right. ex had popped up randomly when he was in Harris Teeter yeah. oh, or something. But nope, didn't show up. And I actually, on social media, I went on, and by name, called him out on that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I won't do it here, but <laughs> I mean, and if I ever see him out in public. Did you find out if it was this is like real name or was it like an I alias? do know his real yeah. name. Yeah. And and the sad thing is, is that he actually like I know where he, I know where he lives. I, right. But obviously he has way more issues. But I mean, seriously, that does truly happen. I thought it just happened in the movies yeah, where people right. stand you up. No, it, it really happens here in Wilmington. I mean, I can't say I haven't ghosted people. But did you stand someone up? Like in no. person? No. People do it all the time. I just, so like when I say I ghosted people, like I talk to people for a while and then like I can't process too many things at once and my brain's like, what? And then I just don't respond. Like mm-hmm. I had someone reach out and they're like, hey, um, are you okay? You just stopped <laughs> talking to me. Was there a reason? I was like, oh, yeah, no, I just got, like, overloaded on life, and I just didn't talk to nobody for, like, Probably four Probably not someone months. you'd be dating, though. No, I mean, like, it was, I had met them on social media and, like, hung out a few times, and then we just stopped. Yeah. And I feel bad. But I'm one of those people that would feel bad. I don't think he feels bad. I think this is something he does. And, and that was just one. Mm-hmm. There were others. There was another guy who I... And I'm one, you know, I'm a, I'm guilty. I will say this. I am, I'm a girl. I fall fast and I paint the picture of like, oh, we're, this is going to be so romantic. And <laughs> reality hits me at yeah. some point. 
and maybe I'm too much, but like I blame Hallmark. God, <laughs> Hallmark or Sex in the City or mm. no, s- let's be real. I feel like if <laughs> Sex in the City like, taught to us anything, because yes, I have watched quite a bit of Sex in the City. I'm so proud of you. That that is. I have you, Tyler? I've never even no. watched an episode. Chris is no. just no, like no, his, is his score it. has just like no. so, whoever your <laughs> wife is like. Out of the keeper. two of us, it's really funny because me and Tyler both had people were like, "Oh, you guys were gay, right?" And we we're like, at some point <laughs> in our life, oh. not together, but like at some point, you do not look gay at all. Well, when we were younger, we oh, were like okay. in well, shape and like <laughs> yeah, <weird>. and, <laughs> and being a guy in the jewelry industry. Because I was in the oh, jewelry industry okay. as well, and he ca- still is. Um, you just automatically, like, people automatically oh, assume okay. it. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing, too, coming from up north, when I first moved down here to a beach town, I still always dressed super nice because that's just what you yes. did. Like, you went to high school, and you just you had a polo on and, like, a nice pair of jeans. And I DJed at the time, so I would go, and I would have, like, a nice button-down shirt and stuff yeah. at, like, a dive bar. Yeah. And so people would be like, you straight? <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, as a matter of fact. Yeah. <laughs> like, your uh. style. See, so. <laughs> people that I was gay because all my friends are girls. Okay. So, mm-hmm. like, I grew up, I just made friends with girls. I was raised by women, and I love it. And then I had left school and made friends with more girls, and they were like, love Sex in the City. I saw the Sex in the City movies in theater, <laughs> and people were like, bruh. It's like, no, I'm just a person who likes learning things about everybody so like i watched sex in the city just to learn i'm like why is this such a thing mm-hmm. at the time i probably watched it to learn and like play the game a little bit better but smart but i also as i grew up i analyzed it my wife just finished watching it um all the way through again and i was like this shows you what not to do in a relationship Every, she's like i can't believe she ended up with big and i'm like let's be real she was young and dumb, and Big was great. Should she have ended up with Adrian? Probably. Oh, it was Aiden. Aiden, that's Aiden. what it was. I knew it was an A name. Yes, Aiden. And it's it's so painful, but they show you, like, hey, these are stupid things to do. Yeah. These are not so stupid things to do. Chris keeps talking about starting another podcast. It sounds like he needs a Sex in the City podcast. Well, no. to be honest, <laughs> you know what? There though, is one. It was, Ooh, it is very, I feel like it, Aiden rep- represented the good guy. Yes. Big represented the bad guy. And she continuously went back to the yes. bad guy, which brings me to why I even went to the coffee shop, right? Mm-hmm. Why did I go? Well, because there's always that innate part of, I think, people, men and women, but I think mm-hmm. predominantly women who chase after what we can't have, mm-hmm. what what is unavailable to us. And... That just sucks, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, to to recognize that about somebody. Now, if I went back a third time, that would just be stupid. So I I will not do that again. But um, I did learn when I was sitting there, I was at Casablanca of all places, Mm -hmm. one of my favorite places in Wilmington to get coffee. And I was just sitting there going, wow, you're, Mm. you're, you're being played. And you're so much better than this. So... But you learn from it. I did. And you know mm-hmm. what? I I wish him all the best. I just won't I won't have anything to do with him anymore. See, I I've hit a point in my life where I don't wish everybody the best. <laughs> I'm like, I wish I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I've heard a lot of insults and I'm like, these are so amazing. Like, <laughs> like, I, you should create a like write a book of insults. There is one. Oh, is there? Oh, okay, I need to yeah. read it. So I follow two things. So one on TikTok, there's a girl who like, she shows up, she works for the post office and like people will say like these comebacks and she just shows up out of nowhere and just writes them down. So it's on Amazon, like all oh, these like awesome. smooth comebacks. But in general, like if you, if you meet somebody and they do you wrong, but you don't wish them bad, like there's things that you're like, hmm. Like, I wish every time you flip the pillow over, it's never cold enough. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, every time you try and adjust your sock, the seam just (laughs) happens to hurt your foot. It's true. It's true. Every time you go in for that second interview, you just miss the mark. Yeah. Like, things that are not painful or bad, but they're just not good. Mm -hmm. You could live without them. So that's what I wish on on that guy who goes to G twice. Thank you. (laughs) 
<laughs> 26 minutes in, I'm taking this clip. <laughs> taking this clip, and it's going to be on Instagram. Do you, so. <laughs> do you want to hear another story? Oh, yes. Of dating? Please. Okay, so. Wait, is that still here in town? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, so this kind of leads, it kind of prefaces a question that I think, I think nowadays a lot of men and women in the dating world ask, which is the precedent of who pays. Mm-hmm. Who pays for dinner? So there's so many dating experts online that say, like, whoever initiates the date pays. A lot of, a lot of people still go with the chivalrous, the guy always pays no matter what, right? Okay. Then you have, like, the women like myself who feel like if I offer, I will, I always want to pay for myself if I, and I always offer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... I learned my lesson in that you always have, if you're going to pay and you're going to get that card out, you damn sure better have the money (laughs) to pay for yourself. So I had gone out with this guy. It was our second date. He was a great guy, single dad, like just genuinely good man. Mm -hmm. And um, I liked him a lot. We, I mean, we had a great thing, like just good chemistry, good conversation. Mm -hmm. And we went, he took me to Origins. Oh, Oh, yeah. yeah which is a beautiful restaurant. Mm-hmm. It's a little on the pricier side. And we had, I think we split like, and I knew he was on a budget. I'm on a budget. We're both single parents. Yeah. I get it. So we had split an appetizer and an entree and each gotten a drink. Mm-hmm. And I think it was still like 160 bucks for Sounds just right. that, right? Yeah. right yeah. And so, which is not bad, honestly, for that kind of restaurant. So <laughs> I knew I was running a little tight, but I put my, <laughs> I got my card out and I was like, oh God, please just go through, just go through. <laughs> so five minutes later, the waitress comes and he's like, he's like, oh, thank you for offering to split it. Cause it's a little bit more than I had anticipated. Yeah. He actually said that five minutes later, the waitress comes back, ma'am, I'm so sorry. Your car got declined. Do you have another card? And I'm like, nope. And I looked at Sean and I was like, dude, I'm sorry. I tried. Like I'm just broke. You're going to have to cover it mortified like so mortified that then I was like I started going in my mind I texted my best friend I was like dude you're gonna have to Venmo me money like if he doesn't have it I don't know what to do and I literally just wanted to like crawl under the table it was horrible so many so many statements (laughs) many statements many thoughts on this oh I have all the thoughts (laughs) okay Um. share all the thoughts (laughs) okay so one when it comes to dating Mm -hmm. I do agree. Like, if you initiate the request on, like, hey, let's go somewhere, then you should pay for it. Man um, or woman. Does yeah, not matter. Man or woman. Okay. So, because to me, that's like, hey, you should be smart enough that if you're offering to take me somewhere, hey, I can afford this joint. Um, and the reason I say that is because I've seen people who, like, oh, I went on a date with this guy, and I suggested this spot, and it comes up to, like, a $200 tab, and the guy's like, I, I wasn't. Like, I can't afford that. Like, why'd you pick this place? So that's smart. Because there are some women who do that and they just. They want free meals, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's. See, I don't like, I don't like that because right. I don't think that's fair for either party. No. A gender. Right. Like my, yeah. if my, yeah. and I've told my daughter this, you know, I was like, hey, if you go out with a guy and you offer to pay, you damn sure better expect yes. to pay. Which I did not yeah. follow through on that night, but okay. So yeah. no, I agree with you. Um, but also as a Southern gentleman, mm-hmm. you should always stack cash. Like, don't expect that if a lady invites you to dinner, like if me and my wife ever go out to dinner, like we've planned it even before, like I met her, I was like, all right, so, so I'm picking this restaurant. Okay. I checked the menu. I got, okay. I got enough money in this credit card. Mm-hmm. I do so, like, I always say, like, guys who are listening, if you're taking a woman on a date, you should plan and pay for it. <laughs> so you know, I, I didn't see him again after that. I mean, no, as, no. as sad as that sounds, like, that was a total, a total blow to my ego, but mm-hmm. also just I was so embarrassed yeah. that I was just like, I don't, I don't, I cannot relive this. Oh, but see, like, I, just I would still continue. I'm like, okay, it happens. Like, and he was very gracious yeah. and very kind. I think I was just, I was so in my You're head mortified. about it. Oh, I was so mortified. I mean, if the earth could have swallowed me up in that moment, I, I would have been so happy. But, I mean. It also says a lot, too, that you're willing to come on and share that about <laughs> yourself. 
<laughs> so that really puts you up to be able to like, hey, you know what? I'm able to own up to this too. <gasps> well, and I just know with the man I'm currently seeing, we talk a lot about this where the gender roles of dating have changed so much. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's, so me- there's so much fight over who pays. And, you know, to be honest with you, unless you're rolling in the money, mm-hmm. uh, which, you know, good for you if you are, but most of us are on a budget. Mm-hmm. We have to be more considerate of one another, I yeah. think. And so I've even started saying, like, hey, if first date, let's just meet at a park right. and, like, and just take a walk. Like, yeah. nobody's out any cash. No, everybody's, like, that's a public place. See, I do, like, when me and my wife met, our first date was at a bar. Mm-hmm. Um, and I made sure, like... Now we have a regular bar that we go to. So <laughs> like me and Tyler go to Azalea Station all the time yeah. or we'll go to the Starling. Um, one, make sure you go to a bar that you're familiar with, mm-hmm. but the prices aren't over the top. Yes. Because um, if you go to one that you frequent, then the, the bartender is going to be like, really, bro? You bring another <laughs> chick out here? <laughs> Who's this one? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yes. That, that happened actually before I even left Jackson when oh. my divorce was just being finalized, I went out with this guy who he brought every single date to that bar. And so, and I had, I got to know the mm-hmm. girls there and they were like, stay away. You're one of many. And I mean, yeah, that yeah. I do not recommend that at all. See, that's, that's why like you, you pick a spot. I was, I'm friends with bartenders now. Oh, I don't good. know if I'm actually friends, more of acquaintances because <laughs> no, I sit at the great. bar. Bartenders like, are the best people to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they're funny because they're like, oh my gosh, this guy brings in a different girl every week. And I want to look at the girl and be like, yo, blink twice if you need help. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you can't. That's great. Uh, so I'm just like, so my thought is like your first date, I think going to the park is really cool. Yeah. I think that was my second date. That was our second. That was me and my current boyfriend. Yeah. He's yeah. He our second date. What our first date was at a bar. Our second date was Smith Creek Park. See, mm-hmm. see, you get you get drinks out of the way, so you can. And please don't go over three drinks on your first date. Yeah, good rule. I think that's a good rule of thumb. Yeah, I think one you or had two a, is. You had a thought in your head. What were you thinking? Well, I was just thinking. You know, honestly. It's a lot to expect for someone even to pay three drinks yeah. now. Is yeah, like I know. Ten yeah. or fifteen dollars a drink if you get a cocktail. Yeah, you right. know, that's a lot. That's what. But see, like in my head, this one, like three drinks. You know, that puts you fifteen dollars a drink. That puts you. You might as well go to dinner. I know. Yeah, that's, that's like a hundred dollars. You can go to Saltworks and get a great burger and French fries oh gosh, for like that. twenty bucks. Shout out to Saltworks. <sighs> I just there went there the first time yesterday. I'm in the search of the best burger in Wilmington. And so <laughs> PT's Grill is was a mm. high ranking. PT's Grill was really good. And then we I did. had Saltworks. Oh my God. It was probably it was, so it was almost June last year. Was it did last you year? do you have a best burger in Wilmington? Yes. We did do we, a best so burger. So we had no a way. series on Instagram <laughs> where we it. did best burger in town, had people voting. Um, and who was it? So depends on the burger style that okay. you want. Too. This is so just like, like a regular cheeseburger. Well, so regular cheeseburger, I will, I will have to agree. Island Burgers and Bites out in Carolina, Carolina Beach. Really? Yeah, okay. That All right. one, number one for us. Yeah. And we, ha- like, I was like, okay, cool. They win. We'll check it out. And I was like, oh. It was like, good. There, there's a reason you guys it was won really this. Good. We were Ooh, both. We were like, it's in a, go. Yeah, we were yes. like, it's in a gas station. Like, how good yeah. is this place? And it's not even. Really? It's, in a, it's, it's a convenience store. Okay. But, yeah. <laughs> like, it used to be a gas station. They dropped <laughs> off the gas part years ago. So like it's a convenience store yeah. on your way to the north end. Yeah, you you've passed it. I'm sure. I'm sure. Like yeah. Like the stoplight to turn to head to the north end, mm-hmm. it's right there on the corner. Okay. Yeah. Always when you went out. when you took that left to go to Sea Witch, I was just thinking. So the guy, yeah, he worked at the vape shop right in that. Oh, sa- okay, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Should have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I should have known. <laughs> but but if you talk about like thin smash burgers, mm-hmm. I'm still gonna. Ten toes down. I'm putting Grim Burger. Grim as Burger? my favorite okay. smash food burger. truck. Okay. Yeah. So, but the difference is like how thick your patty is. So like right. the cook is totally different. Like how, how you layer it. Mm-hmm. And their smash burgers, they don't really put like lettuce, tomato, onion. Like they do different Ooh, yes. stuff on it. So shout out to Grim Burger. We're going to have um, one of the Grims on here. And I think honestly, months. I think burgers are a good date night food. 
because they're they're handheld. Yes. And depending on, like, people eat burgers differently. Some people, like, slice them down the middle and, like, take a half each, yeah. mm-hmm. right? And then, but it's not, like, super messy, but it's kind of hot, too. Like, if the girl can, like, really <laughs> handle her burger, like, that's a good thing, that's true. Good <laughs> right? Point. That's a good point. And so, but, like, what's a bad date night food is nachos. And I love oh. nachos so much, but nachos are so messy and just, ugh. I get sour cream in my hair and... <laughs> So I would say nachos and like bone in wings. Wings, yes. Yeah. I was just, I was gonna say wings and nachos are the worst date night foods. Well, like I would do it if you guys are like starting to get serious. Yeah, to see if how silly she looks. Yes, right. Because if she can accept the fact that like <laughs> oh I'm eating a bone in wing and I'm I'm handling it, then it's a different story. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's how you that's know if it's kind of next material. level. Yeah. That's next level. But that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like that's that's after the first three dates. Because mm-hmm. like your first three should be like outdoor experience have some drinks have some food yes and then you can shift to like the more lifestyle events like oh we're going to a sporting event or we're going to like oh i love that that's like a good how to date guide because yeah the first three dates that's yeah that rules it out and then never have a first date at your house i learned well i learned that the hard way Mm. i've done all the things (laughs) wrong like i really have and me and my best friend Amy, she lives across the street from me, and she's like my sister wife. Like, we met last summer when I first moved in. She had been here a couple months earlier, and we were both single, and I got her on Bumble with me, and we would literally spend Saturday mornings together on her couch swiping. And we'd be like, and they would, we would, we would like, they would pop up, the same guys would pop up, and we'd be like, and one of us would check the 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 Facebook group. Yeah. Uh, are we yeah. dating? <laughs> Just because people would post things on there about these guys, and we'd be like, "Oh, they're in the group. We got to swipe on them." So <laughs> that's so sad that we did, <laughs> we did that, so, but it was like a Saturday morning activity. Yeah. So back to the story time. Did you oh, yes. did you meet one of these guys that before you got onto the um, Facebook pages? So that's the problem with these groups is you screen them. Now, mm-hmm. so you go, so say you do connect, right? Right. Say on Bumble, yeah. you see the guy and you like the guy and you've messaged. Before you go out with this man, you go to the group uh, and I check see. if he's been posted. Uh, yeah, go do and I have checks. done that. And so what happened, I had a date scheduled with this guy from Myrtle Beach. He was supposed to come here. And I don't know why, but like some of his text messages were just a little off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I had my girlfriend check the Myrtle Beach group because she was mm-hmm. in that one. And she sent me the post, 68 comments on this guy. <laughs> Sheesh. So he had a reputation. Sounds like In it. fact, a lot of the guys in there, they, that are routinely posted, some of the, some of us just laugh about it. We're like, mm-hmm. oh, this guy, we, we feel like we know him. He yeah. gets posted every, <laughs> every other day. And I mean, the groups were started for safety purposes. Yeah, of right. course. But I, I just wonder where's the are we dating the same girl groups, and why don't they have as much fandom See, around it? There's a, d- there's a double standard, right? Yeah. No, I was gonna say something. That's that was appropriate. Uh, <laughs> I don't okay. really go. So, no, so please I do. Will, I think that when guys have more of an openness to date the same girl, mm-hmm. or like to have dated the same girl, then girls do have dating the same guy. I, well, I, I agree that's with kind, that, yeah, though. That's, that, that's not inappropriate at all. I think but, that that's the truth. Well, I meant like... You mean in, sleep with them? Yeah. 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 I mean, unfortunately, in a small area, there's a lot of overlap. Yes. Mm-hmm. You just have to be safe and careful. Yes. Wrap it up. Yeah. Which I will say that that is, that is a red flag in the dating world if there's... No, Wait. like I'm a woman, I'm a very independent, intellectual woman mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I'm sexual. I like sex. I have my own condoms. Like I bring them with right, me. Yeah. But if a guy like waves them off or no, 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 I'm like, that's a problem. Yeah. Like, all right, I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't, that makes me very like ill. Like why wouldn't you? Yeah. Right. Well, especially because in your bracket like anybody i can understand like the guys being like well i'm under 30 like oh i don't like condoms like if you're (laughs) over 30 like that argument we've everyone's heard it Mm -hmm. we know it feels better whatever put a condom on because no one wants to have a kid 
over 40. Well, and also it, aura disease. I was say, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Because like, like if you're doing this now, how, how many other times did yes. this happen? Exactly. This? And I mean, unfortunately, I, it's not, I'm not saying that I haven't been dumb, but, and who of us haven't, mm. but for the most part, especially if you are t- partaking of a smaller dating pool, be careful, you know, or at least try, right. <laughs> <laughs> try. Um, but no, it's, it's been interesting. I mean, I've met a lot of great guys. I probably went on like 20, like 20 different dates with yeah. men that I met here in Wilmington. And, um, I had one interesting one. I knew the man was just in for the weekend. I knew, mm-hmm. I knew what it was before we went out and I was fine with it. I liked yeah. him. He liked me. We went to Fermental. It was my first mm-hmm. time there. Yeah. Grabbed a drink. Um, he was staying in a local air- yeah. Airbnb and, but it was the first time I ever got face slapped. Never gotten face slapped during sex. Interesting. <laughs> And Sorry. and he did it. No, I'm serious. Like he did it. And at first I was like, I thought it was an accident. Right. I was like, oh maybe okay. Then it happened again. You're like, no. And no. I was like, dude. Like, let's not do that. And he, he did it again. And then I was like, I was like, I slapped him. This is all like while yeah. we're doing it. I slapped him and I was like, if you do that to me again, I'm gonna do it even harder. And you don't want to fuck with an Italian. <laughs> Fair. Never been face slapped before. So, so that did not. That was a one and done. Yeah. And when he reached out to me again, when he was in town again, because he comes here frequently to yeah. open restaurants, mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, yeah no, 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 I'm seeing someone. Yeah. <laughs> so, have you ever watched the show Californication? No, I don't think I have. Oh my gosh, you're missing out. Now I need to. Can, like, is there a streaming service that carries it? It was on Showtime. Like oh, I watched it years ago. Californication. I've heard um, of it. I know the song. Right. Yes, mm-hmm. that yeah. is. I think that actually might be the theme song, um, but it's with David Duchovny. Mm-hmm. And spoilers, but not spoilers. The show's been out and it finished for like over a decade. But I love him. I think of X Files when I think of David yeah. Duchovny. <laughs> but it was really awkward because he ends up hanging out and like meeting the youngest daughter and the nanny. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen the nanny? No, of course not. Slack. Uh, Fran Drescher. Oh my gosh. Yes. Uh, But like the girls, like they end up going home, hooking up, and like she punches the shit out of them. (laughs) And he's like, What are you doing? And she does it again. And her idea was like, well, I figured like for my first time, it would be it'd be interesting to tell people I punched somebody. He's like, time out, time out. First off, <laughs> how old are you? Secondly, <laughs> wh- you punch me. So anytime someone's like, I got slapped or I was like, I bro, was like, I was seriously just how often does that come up in conversation? Dumbfounded. I've heard I've like we stated earlier, Ooh. I am a person who talks to people just to learn different <laughs> things across the world. So like I've heard a ton of random stories to me, slapping, choking, pinch, like I've heard of almost everything. I just, I'm consider myself to be pretty open-minded. That was, wow. That was way, yeah. way, way over my head. Um, well, actually it was like right. In yeah, it was right in my face. <laughs> <laughs> it was right in my face. Um, so I went out with this other guy who I really liked and um, we, we dated for a couple months, and um, he, it was right around Christmas time. He went to see his family. I knew he was going to be gone. He didn't text me or talk to me for, like, 10 days. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, well, ghosts, there, yeah. you know, where these men go to these, like, graveyards of these ghosts. I don't know. I don't know what happens to them. But I ran into him at Publix, of course. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, hey. And he's like, he's like, hey, been meaning to call you and I was like really okay. yeah like 10 days okay whatever uh, 10 does seem like a lot it does but in girl world I think like when you're dating somebody for like right. a good couple months seeing somebody pretty regularly and then and then they don't talk over the yeah. holidays like it wasn't yeah. like a like this was no Merry Christmas no nothing oh yeah right well, to me like holidays is the time like if I'm going if I ever went to go see my family, it'd be like, okay, I'm with my family or I'm with my friends. But yeah, I still would have been like, hey, Merry Christmas or something. But right. I think that, so I've actually, I know I'm, I'm speaking as from my perspective, mm-hmm. but I've had a couple of really great conversations with men. And 
women do this too. So, I mean, honestly, oh, like, yeah. you I know, women, match, yeah. like women play the game and they, they date multiple people at once. And I mean, even my good friend, Ben, who I refer to as the, I actually have him on my phone as the OG Bumble boy. He was the <laughs> first Bumble boy that I ever went out with. And yeah. he lives here in Wilmington. We met at satellite for a beer, our mm -hmm. first date. And I'd only been on the app for like three days and he's just, he's become one of my dearest friends. And so, you know, he tells me and Amy, like he calls us all the time and tells us about his dates and these women. And he's a, he's definitely afraid of getting on the apps because of this yeah. group. He was, mm -hmm. he was actually posted on the group. Oh, <laughs> so <no>. he's like <laughs> terrified. So he does not go online anymore. And, um, but he tells me all the time, he's like, yeah, women just get bored. They, I feel like they have, he feels like women have the upper hand in online dating and especially mm -hmm. here in Wilmington, you know, especially women, younger women can go on there and they have their, they can pick and choose. Right. They can go for an older gentleman who yep. might be a little bit more successful or a little bit wealthier. They can also go for the young college guy who, you know, might just be cute and, you know, yeah. ripped or whatever. Um, so for men that are here in Wilmington that want to find a wife, he's like, I don't know what to do. I feel for him. I really do. No, I, I told my wife, like, we know we're not splitting up. But I said, <laughs> if anything ever happens, I will never date again because of, like, all of my friends and all the stories. I'm like, I will just be the guy who shows up at the bar and is like, hey, what's up? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Back old school, yes. Is that, but where else do you meet people? If you're not, what if you're not a bar person? So where do you meet people? That comes into the fact that America needs more third spaces. Yes. Like we tell need, me more about these third spaces. Wait, do you really not know what that I is? I don't know. So like back in the day, well, I say back in the day, it wasn't that long ago. Like you, a third space would be something that's not your house or your work. Okay. So, mm -hmm. but not a bar. Third, well, no, it could a bar. be anything. Could be. It could be a bar. Yeah. It okay. could be like coffee a shop, bookstore, a bar. coffee shop, okay. like places that you could meet somebody mm -hmm. and not feel like overly forced into something mm. like you don't date people you work with. Cause that's just, right. you, you don't right. shit where you eat, but you also like, if or live. Yeah. Right. I've dated a guy. Like you don't yeah. date in your apartment. Mm. complex. Yes. No, I made that mistake in yeah. my twenties. Bad. Do not do that. Yeah. So that's the thing that. is like, you just gotta, we need more spaces. Mm -hmm. Like I like the cargo district because there's multiple bars and like it's walkable. So it's not like, Hey, you know, I'm sitting at one spot. I can go here. And there's a lot of bars nowadays that make uh, NA drinks. Mm -hmm. Like almost every day, like if we go to a bar, I'll have a non-alcoholic. Mm -hmm. Just because like you don't need to get drunk to hang no, out. You don't. But I just like to sit there. I also really like um, fresh citrus drinks. Mm -hmm. So like a lot of NA drinks are very mm -hmm. citrusy. So you sit there and you're like, you feel a little bit more refreshed. Um, it's also really weird trying to hit on somebody at the gym. Like yeah. I never did it, but like I, I'm like, mm. I'd be real mad if I was a like a hot girl trying to like do like mm -hmm. squats or like a bench press and some dude was like, Hey, what's good? I'm like, no, no. It's no. crazy to me that guys even do that too. But I mean, <laughs> I guess they're going to the gym to like prey on women, I guess. But like when I go to the gym, but then again, I've been married pretty yeah. much the whole entire time I have. But like <laughs> I want to get my shit done. Like I go in there, like get my workout in and then I want to go back home and shower. Yes. <laughs> like, so the gym is, I, that's what Ben, he wants to find a, a woman who's fit like him. Mm -hmm. He's really into soccer and volleyball and you know, he's a fit guy and you know, he takes his workouts very seriously, but he, he feels the same way. He's like, right. I can't go up to a woman while yeah. I'm working out. And so I told him, I started working out at F45 in Mayfair. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I love that because it's very like community oriented, yeah. but it's also, you're kind of in your own zone. But then before and after the classes, you can kind of like Chat. mix up with, mm -hmm. but like there, I feel like some of the guys are a little, a little bit more like, they're there just for their work. They're there yes, for just right, their workouts. Yeah. So like, I wouldn't feel comfortable even striking up a conversation. I'd feel more comfortable and I'm pretty, I'm pretty extroverted. So I'd feel more comfortable striking up a conversation at a bar or yes. something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Interesting. Bill's is a good place. Yeah. I'm like, people like mm -hmm. volleyball and soccer. Like there's a lot of, Oh, he uh, lives there. I think that's his third space. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That is absolutely his third space. I am not sure. I'm still working on mine. Space. Well, Porter's neck is, I feel like very it's suburban. Yeah. yeah. And and so, you know, we're like, we have the kids and. Yeah. 
I mean, you really only have, like, you can go to Outer Dunes. You And we do. I, we do Ogden Taproom. We do Outer Dunes. We do um, Cornerstone, mm-hmm. Bridgewater, you know, but, like, it, K38's out there. Right. Do you know anybody who wants to invest in a cocktail bar? <laughs> I know somebody who would love to come drink out there. Oh, me too. Well, there's a new, I've not been, but it's called Freya House. Have you heard, heard of this? Of Mm-hmm. It looks like a house. I have not been. Where is this? At? Freya House is on the. It's right before Poplar Grove, right in Porter's Neck. Like mm-hmm. when you're going out towards Hampstead, mm-hmm. it's right on your right hand side on 17. And apparently, it's a really cool spot. I have not been though, so I don't know. And it's literally a stone's throw away from where I live. Interesting. I'll have to check it out. It's literally it, a house. Freya House, but yeah. it's it's German, right? F R E Y A, and then House is spelled H A U S. Right. That also That's sounds German, right? But Freya is like the female goddess of Norse mythology. Ooh, you know about goddesses? <laughs> He's all about some mythology. I love that. Yeah, I, I <laughs> that is so cool. I'm not the. I will say I'm not overly intelligent, but I am like semi intelligent. <laughs> I told my coworker that the other day. She was like, I was like, she said something. And I was like, you're semi-intelligent. She's like, I'm semi-intelligent. I'm like, I think everybody with common sense is semi-intelligent. Like, I would consider you intelligent if you had a doctorate in like a, like a niched market. Mm-hmm. And then you'd be like, intelligent in that area. Yes. So I've met plenty of surgeons that. Um, this is outside. so sweet. Want I'm just sipping it because I'm, I'm nervous, probably. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. It is so sweet, but it's I know, good. but it's delicious. It is. It's good. So, so, Lee, so sorry. So I have a one last random question. Yes. All right. So growing up as a black man in the South, mm-hmm. I always heard tall, dark, and handsome. Yeah. You said short. Dark. I do. I like shorter men. I like under six foot. Six foot and under. Hey. Sorry, Chris. If Tyler was single, he'd have a shot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that dark. <laughs> no. <laughs> I do. I like uh, that guy I'm currently seeing is is six foot tall and he's dark and delicious. He's younger than me though. Cause I'll mm. be 42 and on May 26th and he's, he just turned 30. So, so you are, I a am cougar. a cougar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think 12 years is the max you can go though. It's yeah. The uh, generational swing is, is a big one. Yeah. Like I hung out with somebody years ago and it was like a 12 year gap and I'm like, this is doable. But as soon as like someone, I was like, Oh, you're kind of cute. And they were like, Oh, I'm this. I was like, no, you have to know, I mean, he's an old soul too. So mm-hmm. he knows, for instance, like I told him his rule of thumb for dating a woman would be like, if they knew the heart, like anything by heart, mm-hmm. the group. Yeah. I don't know. Oh my God. Barracuda. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, okay. that was like the yeah. one main Yeah. Like, right. Like alone. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Mm. I didn't realize that was the. Oh my God. Yes. Uh. So I told him as like future reference once we're done. Cause I mean, honestly, like I'm going to ride the wave. Yeah whatever yes. he's great and um he makes me happy so but anyway like i told him i was like moving forward if once you move on to the next woman if mm-hmm. she doesn't know these songs just ditch her it's <laughs> not worth it <laughs> Under- understandable so wait i was going back so dark you meant like yep. dark complexion mm-hmm. hair yep like you have a yeah like i'm tan. like i'm like black guys indian guys um greek Italian, um, Croatian. You like Mediterranean people. Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I had to like, as a, a fellow who grew up thinking tall, dark, and handsome meant black guys, and then someone was well, like, Well, I do. No. I like, I mean, I, do, I just don't, I'm only 5'3", so I'm short. So my dad was, my dad is 5'8", so mm-hmm. to me, like, that short, stocky guy yeah. is like the, the man guy. You yeah. know, that's the man's man, so. Yeah, I just yeah. wanted that clarification because I had someone, I was like. <laughs> like, you're tall, dark, and handsome. To me, yeah. yeah. No, but you I are. met somebody who said that, and they were like, yeah, you're not my type. And I'm like, um, is there anyone? So what else do you want? But I was also young. <laughs> I was a lot younger, and I was dating multiple people at the time. And I was like, okay, it makes sense. You just don't so like you black were people. on the Facebook page. <laughs> no. <laughs> I max, and me, I joke with my wife all the time. I'm like, I always maxed out at two people. If you go more than two, then it just gets too confusing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how to keep tra- keep track of? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, long. I don't. I don't know. I. I. They also say <laughs> don't. They also say don't exchange phone numbers outside of the app 
until you meet. That makes sense. Mm. Because there's this false sense of comfortability that exists from from texting or mm-hmm. calling right. that the safe zone is in that app. And I mean, I I broke that rule quite a few times, but I can see why that's important to yeah. just kind of keep that above. Yourself. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that makes sense. sense. Yeah. Yeah. So where'd you meet your... My where'd current you, Where'd you meet the wave? So the wave, the wave and I met on Bumble, okay. if you can believe that. But it was great because, um, and he was actually posted in the group twice. Okay. But he had great reviews. <laughs> it's like the Yelp for <laughs> That's dating. That's all I was about to say. Right? <laughs> it is. It's like the Yelp for dating. I didn't think about it till just now. But he had great reviews. Like all of these, the, he had like four or five comments and they were all... So nice. He's so nice. Oh, I knew him when, you know, as a bar, mm-hmm. I, I was the bartender for a, a bar he went to and he was great and very respectful. So we messaged on Bumble and we met for just a, just a beer. We met and yeah. we had a beer. I paid for my own beer cause I could afford $6. Thank <laughs> God. And, um, we, then the next date was Casablanca coffee mm-hmm. and we went for a, a walk at the Smith Creek park mm-hmm. and, and then he, the third date, he took me to dinner. So it's See? just like the right. three day girl. I love that. So, um, and you know, the biggest thing with us is that he, it's hard because I have children yeah, and I, I don't want more children. As you said, like, honestly, over 40, I mean, more power to you if you, if you want to do it, but I have two beautiful kids that I'm very happy just us and so you know but when you have somebody younger in your life they always want a kid and he does he doesn't know he doesn't know Mm -hmm. yet and I don't I'm in no position to tell him what he wants for his future so we went back and forth for a while we didn't know if we really wanted to continue seeing each other but um but then we made the decision that you know for as long as it lasts we're gonna just enjoy it and it's funny because right around the same time that we started dating Kristen Cavalieri Mm. made it public with her 24 year olds beau <laughs> and i was like oh my gosh i'm so glad that it, you know he's 30 at least mine is 30 <laughs> and like an actual grown-up adult and um and not to say i mean i'm glad she's happy right, i yeah. mean and and that's great and really age is just a number but i feel like to a point it it, it can pose a right. lot of challenges and thankfully you know, my man is very he's willing to grow with me versus, you know, he's, he's just, he's open to, Mm -hmm. to, to advice or suggestions. And so am I, because I don't want to be one of those, you know, bitches that are just like set in their ways. And and my girlfriend said, like, isn't this how cat women are made? Like we just get set in our ways and like, we just accrue cats. I hate cats personally. Like I'm allergic to them and I think they're disgusting. But Mm -hmm. anyway, if you're a cat person, yay. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> One of the first conversations that me and my wife had too, it was like, under no circumstance will there be a cat in my house. Is there <laughs> like, a cat in your house? No, okay, not. okay. Yeah. He's a dog. Okay, I have two dogs, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're dog people. Yeah, all right. Because we've gone over Oh, time. yes, yes. <laughs> so, t- so, one sorry. question. Yes. All right, well, two final questions, okay. right? So, one, why a blog and not a podcast? Ooh. And then two... What is your favorite color? Okay, so one blog versus podcast. I didn't think I had the voice for a podcast. And I think you do. I love to I love to write. I'm a writer. I've been writing since I was twelve. So I've written countless short stories and I just I feel alive when I write. And I, I love to read too. So I'm a I'm a reader and a writer. And then my favorite color is green. If I, wait, what type of green? So I, I really like Kelly green, but I'm also like a hunter green or a mint green person. Okay. Um, but honestly, I love green in general. Okay, I'll accept it. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> so if I, if I can... What's your... Is yours green? Actually, I am that guy. My favorite color is actually midnight blue. Oh, that's my... My son says his yeah. favorite color is cyan. Oh, yeah. See? Good. Mm-hmm. I, I, my wife looked at me like I was stupid when I said that. I'm like, no, no. Midnight blue is like when you're at the beach mm-hmm. at night and it's the color like right above the ocean and the horizon meeting. Yep. Mm-hmm. And she's like, bro, stop watching chick flicks. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, what's your favorite color? Mine would be navy blue. 
Yes. Oh, okay. So blues. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, but I actually really like green. Okay. But like I'm sticking. I'm most of my wardrobe's green nowadays. But like I'm sticking with midnight blue. That's it. how all of the green got in the studio. Got it. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Mm. Yep. Well, thank, thank you so much for having me. Thank I, you. I hope we delve a little bit into the, the dating so much. world. Okay. Oh, so, good. <laughs> so shout out your blog again. Oh, yes. It's um, www.abrandnewdayblog.net. A, or day with an I or a Y? A Y. Okay. A brand new day.net. That's what it is. Okay. A brand new day.net. And I'm on Instagram like a brand new day because that's what I've been saying since I was two. Nice. Oh, nice. Brand day, like a brand new day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down for it. <laughs> Thank you guys so Thank, much. Yeah, Thank thanks. you. Um, for, yeah, you guys check out our YouTube, Spotify, all the things. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and keep an eye out for Chris's third podcast. Catch you in the next one. <laughs> Cheers.